All right, let's look at this next problem. This is a great problem. All right, uh, we've got a drum shown in the figure. It has a mass of 60 kilograms and a radius of gyration of 0.25. All right, so if they give you the radius of gyration, then in order to find the I, uh, it's K squared M, right? It's just K, that radius of gyration, 0.25 squared times the mass of 60. So this would be 3.7... 3.75. Well, the units here are kilogram times meters squared. But anyway, the rate of gyration is 3.75. So if they give me a K, I, I'll just go ahead and, hey, let me calculate that I. Probably going to use it <clears throat> later on. All right. A cord of negligible mass is wrapped around the periphery of the drum. It's attached to a block having a mass of 20, right here, 20 kilograms. If the block is released, Determine the drum's uh, angular acceleration. <clears throat> All right, so I'm summing forces. I'm summing the moments. Sum of the force equals mass times acceleration. Uh, remember that this class is dynamics, right? This drum is accelerating. The tension in this rope is not just the weight. Uh, let me draw the free body diagram for that block. 20, 9.81. Tension, sum your forces, right? Tension minus 20, 9.81 is not equal to zero anymore. It's equal to this acceleration of, let's call it block B, in the y direction. All right, so and maybe I'm going to reuse that equation in a little bit. So, you know, don't fall back into statics thinking that the weight is the, the same as the tension. Draw your free body diagram. <clears throat> Tension is, is kind of this, this weird equation right here. Okay, but uh, you know, the free body diagram for that block, that's all I've got. I have no need to sum the forces in X for this block. There's nothing in it. So no need to sum the moments. There's no moment. Uh, but let me just take that equation and put it in my back pocket. Put a star by it. Hey, I might can come back to that equation uh, when I start solving uh, for everything. Okay, so now let me draw the free body diagram for the disc. Maybe I'll draw it right here. So here's my disc. I've got a pin right here. So I've got an O, X, and an O, Y at the pin. I've got the weight, <clears throat> 60 times 9.81. And then I've got the tension acting on the edge of that drum right there. Okay, so let me sum my forces. Uh, generally, for these rotation problems, I like to sum my forces normal, sum my forces tangential, but point G is not accelerating. In, I, I could still, I could define some sort of normal tangential, but point G is, is not moving in in the normal tangential, I like to sum my forces according to the acceleration of point G. So I can define any axes. I'm just sticking with X and Y. All right, so sum the forces in the X direction. <clears throat> OX equals mass times acceleration of point G in the X. And point G is not accelerating, right? Point G is not moving left, right, up, down. Normal tangential, it's, it's not moving, it's not accelerating. So this tells me OX is zero. I'm not sure, I should box that in. Uh, <clears throat> sum my forces in the Y direction. I've got OY minus tension minus 60, 9.81 equals mass times acceleration of point G in the Y. Uh, but again, point G is not accelerating. So this is zero, zero. Okay, that has two unknowns. Let me sum the moments. Let's sum the moments about point G. I've got the I of point G right here. Sum the moments about point G. <clears throat> All right, so OX doesn't create a moment about point G. OY goes straight through it. The weight goes straight through it. The only thing creating a moment is this tension, <clears throat> and it is 0.4 equals I G uh, 
alpha. Now, is this tension positive? Uh, I mean, if is this clockwise or counterclockwise, positive or negative? Uh, in general, if I have defined alpha before, I would make sure it I make sure it agrees with everything. I haven't really defined it, so I guess I could def I could make it whatever I want to. So I'm going to make this positive counterclockwise, positive counterclockwise. Okay, and so what do I have right here? <clears throat> Forget that equation. That equation doesn't help me. But I've got this equation right here, this equation right here, and this equation right here. There is some overlap, right? This tension is the same tension. Uh, but the unknowns, I've got three equations. And the unknowns are tension, alpha of the disk, OY at that point, and the acceleration of block B. <clears throat> and So my problem is I've got three equations and four unknowns. So I need another equation, or am I missing something? Are any of these the same? Are any of these uh, unknowns related to each other? Think about that. Are any of those unknowns related to each other? Is there some equation that I can come up with that relates some of those unknowns is the acceleration of block B related to the alpha of the disk yeah yeah they, they are I mean the acceleration of point B would be the acceleration of this point you know C we'll call it on the edge and the acceleration on the edge the tangential acceleration of point C would be the same as the acceleration of the block. And so <clears throat> the acceleration equals R alpha. So maybe there is yeah, this, this um, new, a, a fourth equation, acceleration equals R alpha. But, 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 be very careful. Do these agree? So the, the acceleration of the block B is equal to... 0.4 alpha, but do the signs agree? Ex acceleration equals r alpha. That's just a magnitude equation. You've got to think about the direction yourself. You've got to think about positives and negatives yourself. Yes, I would say that the magnitude of the acceleration of b is equal to 0.4 alpha, but do they agree? Positive acceleration um, I define these up so acceleration B is positive up um, alpha is positive counterclockwise and so those don't agree do you see that a counterclockwise alpha would lead to a downward acceleration or vice versa and an up acceleration would lead to clockwise. So signs don't agree. So here's what I'm going to use. The acceleration of B is actually negative 0.4 alpha. The acceleration of B is negative 0.4 alpha. That right there is my fourth equation I didn't add any unknowns, so now I've got four equations, four unknowns. So do you see that? Many times, many times, the acceleration, you know, especially something that's hanging off here, is related to the alpha, right? Many times the acceleration is related to the alpha by R alpha, but be careful. Um, in fact, if I was thinking ahead, and maybe if I had already summed my moments counterclockwise, maybe I should have defined this as downward positive. Then I wouldn't have to worry about that negative because my signs would have agreed. Okay? So four equations, four unknowns. So, you know, first thing I would do maybe is plug that in right there. And then I would have that unknown with T and alpha and that unknown with T and alpha. I could solve that one without too much trouble, <coughs> and then solve for everything else. Solve for everything else. So I'm um, oh, apologize that don't have the final answer here, but the rest of it is just math. I'm sure you wish you could just 
Stop right there, skip right there. That's the heart of the problem, right? Free body diagram, sum of the forces equals MA. Sum of the forces equals MA. Sum of the forces equals MA. Sum of the moments equals I alpha. And then look at all those equations and solve for, uh, solve for everything uh, that you can. Solve for everything that you can, okay?